Oh, wow. I, I realized I wasn't recording this part. Um, but, but I want us to understand, uh, of, by all name, I, do you understand what I'm saying? That though you as God, he did not come to operate as God, but as man. Do you, you understand? I need to be clear that I well, understand what I'm saying. In, anybody comments, please? Amen. Yeah, I'm following so far, um, David. Um, I'm seeing that, you know, Jesus, his his role was to come in the form of flesh. Right, his role. As, as God, right? And then the Holy Spirit, as you will um, tell us later, is the comforter who will come after Jesus right. went back. But I don't remember what you said at the first part about God, because you said the, the whole Godhead is involved in... in um, redemption. Right, right. God, God the Father makes the decisions. Mm -hmm. Makes it, okay. Son, God okay. the Son came and died. Yeah. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be all that God wants us to be. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Thanks. They are, they are all God, but Jesus Christ did not come as God. Deliberately. Right. He came as a man deliberately. Mm -hmm. so, no, because of this, many Jehovah's Witness get, get, get a mix up. You think that God is only one, the Father? Jesus Christ is not God, not the Holy Spirit is as force. They misunderstand what the scripture teach. All children are the same God. Elohim. Adonai. The Lord. But because the, 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 their roles change in, in redeeming mankind. They deliberately they took that to on that role. Because they had to do it. A man to restore back to them, to, to God the Father. He was not omniscient. He didn't know everything. Why Jesus never knew when he was going to return. Matthew 24, 36. But about that time, then all, no one knows that even the angels mm -hmm. never, not the son, only the father. That meant he, ne he never knew. Being God, he would have known. If it was, no, let, how would I say? He suspended or he chose to ignore it, his ability as God. That's the best way of saying it. He is still God. There's no question about that. For the sake of redemption, you have to do it this way. Um, because it is not just spirit, but it was also human. You had physical needs. You had physical needs. Luke 4 verse 2 says, being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days, it, it, nothing after all, when they, and that ended, he was hungry. God, God don't get hungry. But as a man, he was become hungry. On the cross, John 19, 28, later knowing that everything was had long been, been finished, so that scripture will be filled, it said, I'm thirsty, or I thirst. Mark 4, 39, Jesus was in the sun sleeping on a cushion. The scripture says, I, I don't know, Lord does not slumber or sleep. But he was sleeping, but he was acting as a man. The disciples woke him. And said to him, teacher, don't you care for John? Understand, God is not human. God is not human. No made of flesh. So Jesus came as a flesh. He took on the humanity for a reason. He had to do it for a reason. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit. Or God is that spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is not flesh. Um, one scripture, I think, number says, God is not a man. God is not a man. Not a human being. The next thing, God cannot be tempted. God can, cannot be tempted. Jesus could, Jesus could be tempted, however. James 1, 13 to 14 says, Let no man say man is tempted and tempted by God. Well, God cannot be tempted by evil. But does he himself tempt anyone? Each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desire and entice. Because Jesus became man, you, you, you could have been tempted. Satan so recognized this. They appealed to different things. That, that was human, that was man. He said, make this stone the bread. He said, don't, don't, don't bow down and worship me. Yeah, I tried to just, just overcame him by choosing not to do it. Look at this, Hebrews 2.18. 2, For in that he himself has suffered 
being tempted, he's able to aid those who are tempted. One of the reasons why he allowed himself to become man, he wanted to walk through what man went through so he could now now lead us into how to overcome those very things. He deliberately went through it so that he could, he, he could point us to how to do it. He could say, listen, for example, when Satan come against you, don't just fight him with your will. Fight him with a word. Say, it is written. It is written. It is written. He did that. It's teach how to overcome temptation. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have a high priest, so we do, do have a high priest which cannot sympathize with us. But was in all points, in all points, tempted as we are. Yeah, without sin. You know, tempted every sin, every, you think about every way that, that he can, that he can. He tempted, Jesus was tempted in that way. In all points. Because of it, because you're tempted in, in all points, every part of error and overcame, he can show us how to overcome temptation. That's the one of the reasons he, he had to come as a man, not the God, though he's God. He had to limit himself to be, to be flesh, a man. That's why sometimes I said, I'm said to myself, the, the, the Jews had no idea when they were going to kill Jesus, what they were doing. He said, couldn't, couldn't, I, couldn't I call um, 12 legions of angels to defend me? Easy. They had no idea who they were messing with. He, he, he deliberately humbled himself. He had to do it for our sake. I mean, the, the purpose was us. The reason was us. He did allow himself to be being to be spat upon because of us. He had to do it for our sake. So why, why did Jesus come? He, he came to introduce us to God. He came to introduce us to God. He's called Everlasting Father. His nature, his love, his plan for us. Isaiah 9, 6. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh. I've thought about something. I've not checked it, so this is David Ferguson speaking. There are two words I use for God sometimes. One is Mighty God and Almighty God. Mighty God suggests God with limits. Mighty God suggests that Jesus Christ, look at this, it's called Mighty God because he limited himself. The thing that he, he chose not to do, because of the fact that he became man. James, John 14, 7. He came to introduce the God, God, God the Father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from no one you know him and I've seen him. He came to introduce us to the Father. He said, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father, what in heaven? He says, he said, pray to the Father in my name. It is the Father good will to give you the kingdom. Talks about the Father. He came to introduce us to the Father. A man can has this, this mindset about the Father that is it, it's not right. They they misunderstand. It's like um they meet meet up on a man when thief attack him and he's beating up the man and beating up the teeth and cutting them up and kicking their face and chopping them up. I assume that is the man. That's a man in war mode. Sometimes you see God in war mode, that's who that is the God that we serve. There's more to God than that. Jesus came to restore mankind fully back to God. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. <clears throat> I'm sorry. James 3, John 3, 14 to 17. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, in so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting mm -hmm. life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not see it in his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Understand, Jesus did not come for the world to be condemned. There are many Christians. I remember one time, um, I saw a man begging. 
the man, a, 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 a begging, just beg for begging, see. That man can't meet, he's just working. He just love beg. And, that's how the other minister begin to curse him as he beg too much. And I'm saying, listen, I'm saying the man is not a Christian. You can't expect him to live morally and he's not saved. Satan mess up people all the time. And that's, they're going to live their way. When a man is saved, they're not different. But Satan mess them up. God just came, not to condemn the world, but to but true in the world will be saved. He came as a bridegroom to claim and redeem, buy back his bride. Ephesians, so, Ephesians 5, 22 to 30, 32. It's a long reading, so I'm going to turn over to, to Pastor Steve. Ephesians 5, 22 to 32. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. So, um, it says, your wives, submit your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And, and the church. I understand this much. Christ came to redeem his bride. You, you know, uh, the next scripture, Colossians 1 16 says, For in him are all things were created, things in heaven and earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers, or authorities, all things have been created to him and for him. You're created for him, for his purpose, his will. We're, we were created for him. Listen, understand, that's why the Holy Spirit didn't come and die for, on the cross, or the Father, but the, the Son. The word of God, we were created for him, for Christ. So he said, I'm going to come and buy by my bride. I'm going to win by my bride. So he had to come and do it. Next point, he came out the spotless lamb without the shedding of blood. There's no remission of sin. Jesus didn't just die on the cross. Jesus didn't just die. He had to die and shed his blood. The blood had to flow. It was 9.22 said, in, in fact, the law requires, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> in fact, the law requires that in everything be cleansed with blood. Without know, the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. But blood has to be shed. Not just somebody dying. Blood has to be shed for, 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 for sins to be forgiven. You just had to die a brutal death. Blood had to shed. In fact, all blood came out of his body, it appears. When, when they... The centurion stuck him with the spear. Blood mixed the water came out. But most of the food started to leak out. Then he his feet so the blood would have flowed to his feet and come out as well. Blood had to be shed. Understand that important for blood to be shed. John 1 29. Next to Jesus, John saw Jesus coming toward him. And said, look, the Lamb of God takes away sin of the world. He had to die for the for sin to be forgiven. Could not be forgiven because God wanted to forgive. He had to forgive because somebody paid the penalty. Somebody was punished 
for our sins. Jesus Christ willingly died. He came and deliberately died on the cross. In fact, in fact his, his flesh cried out, Father, if this cup, if, if this cup can be moved, move it from me. Nevertheless, you will be done. He cried, he agonized. That was the human side of him kicking in. But he, he, he determined as a second, second last Adam. I'm going to die because I have to die for mankind to be redeemed. I have to die. I have to die. I have to feel the pain man got through. I have to struggle the same struggle man got through. I overcome Satan so I can then begin to show them how to do it in their flesh. That's God. He, he could have done that easily. But he had to come as man to do it for man so he could show man how to do it again. We tend to see God as judgmental based on what he did in Israel. That is not an accurate understanding of him. People tend to see God as judgmental. They tend to see God as, 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 as harming human beings. And they, they don't understand what happened. Because they look at what I'm in Israel and use it for the rest of the world. I see that God is, um, we're going to look at how he treated Israel and why. Also, we examine how we treat other nations. If you take a, 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 a read to the scriptures, you see God, God did not treat the other nations as bad as he treated Israel. There's a reason for that. Right? The unnatural thing that Israel went through. There's a reason God wanted to preserve them, bring forth the Christ. He wanted to remove blame. So he's not going to point the finger at, at them. He had to do hard things to, to force them to, to obey. For example, it says he almost exactly stoned them to death, kill them. Why? Because he had to wipe it out so it didn't follow on into the nation. Worship of other gods said, no, kill them, kill them. The other thing that we misunderstand why God, why God did what he did, he had no really no way choice. You think that he could do better when Jesus came, after Jesus came. But without Jesus coming, you think he could not do. Um, God treats those who are ignorant differently from those who are informed. He does. Those who, who know their master's will and does not do it will be, be, be with more stripes, the scripture says. With more stripes. We're gonna get a harsher beam. Those who know. God gave Israel law to protect them from the natural results of sin. In order, in order for them to live long on the earth. It was to create a culture that the Christ would be brought up in. It it wasn't perfect, but it was the best at the time in man's journey. He gave them nutri nutri nutrition and laws, laws concerning worship, relationship laws, etc. For example, one law said when you're going to defecate, or as Jamaicans call it, do, do, and to fancy them. They said go outside the camp, dig a hole outside the camp, defecate in there and cover it up. He said, let's, let's, I, let's me, I'm walking through the camp to see your feces and judge you. Understand this much. Uh, uh, oh, God was dealing with them. God was telling them that, listen, you need to put your feces away from so flies could not catch it. Why so? Because the fly would go on the food and pass on the germs. They told them to go outside the camp and do it. Why so? The water table would not be impacted. He gave them laws to protect them. Right? Luke 12, 47, 40 says, and that's why we knew his master and did not do it. He shall be beaten with many stripes. He that did, who did not know he had committed sin, the sins had been be with few stripes. For, to, for everyone to whom much is given from him much will be required. And to whom much is have been committed of him, they'll ask them more. I want to think about what happened to, to the Jews. Jesus died about 1,500 1, years after Moses received the law. In this time, Israel suffered severely from their sins. 
our generation of Israelites died in, in, the, in, the, in the desert. Over a million. 40 years, 40, over a million in 40 years. Millions of other died because, died because of war, sorry, persecutions, captivity, then each of the nation. Millions died. In fact, let's talk about um, Hitler killed, let's say, 6 million Jews. In time of judges, but under the Assyrian, Alexander the Great, Crusades, Islam, in the crusade, they kill thousands of Jews. The Christians kill them. Islam, Hitler. They knew God's will, but ignored it. And God allowed judgment to come on them. They were beaten with many stripes. It was hard on Israel because they had his word than other nations. In fact, sometimes we talk about this, what went on in Egypt. Egypt Egyptians never suffered as much as they think. Joseph went when he went there to get a, a practice, put aside 20% of the crops every year. He gained a practice to start. Why? Because Egypt was a breadbasket for the nation around him. Even family Abraham went there, as I went there, or I wanted to go there. People went there for, during difficult times. It, it was like Australia or, or US or UK. Well, a, a, a first world nation, so to speak. And when time of Exodus, when God judged Israel, Egypt, not many people died. The first time people died was from ill sons in the in, in the field when ill came down and killed people that were in, in the field. Most of the servants. Next time was was the, the death of the first one. The third time was when it fear tried to follow him, follow them through the Red Sea. And they died. But guess what? In 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 the, the desert, over a million Jews died. God was harder with the Jews because they knew better than it was with the, the, the non-Jews. And I could give examples of that. Because they uh, a high expectation, yes, for those who know better. Look at Nineveh uh, uh, and Sodom. This is the city of the plain. Gomorrah, Adma, Zebra, and Zora. So this is a nation who never had a covenant with God. Look at them. Nineveh, Jonah 4, verse 11. God sent Jonah to Nineveh. And he preached. God said, explain why in Jonah 4, 11. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, you know, more than 120,000 people, you cannot discern between their right hand and their left. And what type of stuff? It's very compassionate towards them. Nineveh was a wicked city that falls God all kind of thing. But God said, listen, I can't tell about them now. 120,000 people live there. Them don't know better. Them can't, them can't deserve it in the right and, and, and the left hand. And God sent Jonah, said, Jonah, go there and preach. I want to spare them. Um, what, what's interesting is that I can't imagine Jonah going there. I'm sure that they knew of Jonah. Why? Because when he preached, the king listened. See, they must have heard about this prophet from Israel. Because the fact that his skulls was tattered, having been in by, 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 by where? Hello? Somebody's mic is, somebody's mic is not muted. Can you mute, please? Solomon Sol Sol and the cities of the plane. God caused a disagreement to start between Abraham's workers, lot, lot workers, resulting in Lot choosing to move to live in Sodom. Genesis 13. While Lot was living there, cities were captured by other kings, which resulted in Abraham going to war with them. Sodom and the other cities were delivered by Abraham. If Lot had not moved there, they would not have been delivered. Abraham went there because his nephew was there. Genesis 14. Later, the Lord accompanied two angels, Abraham's house, on the way to destroy the cities. And it's a meal. Think about that. God don't need food. When would Abraham Abraham's house? They eat a meal. Them, them kill a cow, you know? The wolf of food. Why God stop there for food? He want the opportunity to talk to Abraham. We see what happened. Abraham began to intercede for the city of Sodom. 
Abraham pleaded for, for, for mercy. He said, God, if they be free to righteous. And he went down to, to 10 righteous. Now Abraham stopped. Now God stopped. Every time Abraham asked God, said yes. Abraham stopped. That thing God could not do because he, because he had to work through mankind. Abraham stopped. Um, God knew long in advance and tried to prevent their destruction. God knew that. So he went to Abraham. God spread out a city called Zor, a little city, which was to, to have been destroyed. Why? Because Lot asked God for it. Lot said, Lord, I can't go to the mountain too far. Zor is a, a little city. Spread out from the Lord. I can't go there. And the angel said, yes. I mean, God would have done it for one, Lot. If Abraham said, Lot, God, there's one there. But there's more to it. Zor, which was spirit, became the largest ancient burial site. Many persons live and die there. The largest of the ancient world. The largest. I mean, tons of people live there. Became, became a Jewish settlement. Known for sweet dates. Lots of Jews live there. About AD 600, he became a, a Christian bishopric. They set up a church there. A major church, a Christian bishop, I mean, in charge of an area. Can you imagine if that sister had been destroyed? Mark 11, 20 to 24. See if I'm going to turn to you again. Mark 11, 20 to 24. Mark 11, 20 to 24. As is to say, then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Parzin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon, in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Jesus Two knew. Two points I want to bring on. One, Jesus knew what needed to be done for Sodom, to be spirit. And he gave Abraham a chance to intercede for them. He knew what, what needed to be done. That is to stay alive until the miracle could, could be done there. But Abraham dropped the ball by stopping at 10. Abraham stopped. Maybe if he got, God, if he can do for 20, now go do for 10. He stopped praying. Second point. Sometimes as Christians, we sometimes judge sin differently from God. In our mind, there are some sins that are worse than some sins. Like, for example, sin of murder is worse than lying. Sin of homosexuality is worse than not believing in the gospel. But according to this scripture, according to the gospel, they never believe it. And it was going to be more tolerable for Sodom which was guilty of homosexuality, more tolerable for them than for the citizens, citizens, citizens that they did not believe the, word, the God's message. Sometimes we need to change our perspective. Sometimes we're, we're against people that do wrongs for the wrong reason. Sinners, as my, as my, my cousin said, sinners sin. That's what they do. They don't know better. We need to share the gospel with them to get them to change so they can experience grace. Not judge them, but try to find a way to share the gospel to them. To get them to change. Um, I'm told that in, 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 in um, Pakistan, is 2% Christians. 2%. That means 98% do not hear the gospel. If you preach the gospel, you can be you can persecuted for it. 
There's something called a blasphemy law. If, if, if they want to fight fight against you, against you, you blaspheme. Um, Islam, and you can be killed for that. And the police will not investigate. I mean, I, I'm told by Sister Marjorie that oh, about 3.5 billion people don't do have a testimony of Jesus Christ in their community, and like about two or two billion never even heard, heard the name Jesus. We need to carry that's a bigger issue with God than one sex army. Not, not repenting of, of their sin and turning to God. Many Christians are also caught up with what sinners are doing rather than the fact that when a man gets saved, genuinely saved, he's going to repent and turn from his ways. When he comes in, sin, it's going to affect his conscience if he's saved. We need to focus on Getting men saved and turning from, from, from sin to God. Not because listen, Hindus and Muslims and, and Buddhists may not commit sins out. Some Christians commit. But they're not gonna say because they don't accept Jesus Christ. Let me continue. Next, next it came as high priest. Want to represent us to God. And God to us. Hebrews 3 1. Therefore, all the brethren, partake of heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Hebrews 4 14 to 15. Seeing that, that we have high priest, was passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, that's all fast or confession. For we do not have high priest, we can't sympathize with us, or witness, but was in all points tempted as we are. Without sin. The good thing about being high priest, he felt everything we got through. He may not, may not have gone through loss, but he felt the pull of his body he was sinning sexually. As a man, he felt the, the pull of his body to lie, to kill. He was angry to murder, but he chose not to because he overcame the temptation. You attend in, in all points, all points. In all points, every single point. But he chose not to sin. You see, temptation is not sin. Temptation pull on, on the human weakness. And you make a choice to sin. You he, he was tempted, but he chose not to sin. Next, he, he was the second Adam. He, became, he, he came at Adam before the fall, not every brother. And he just said, uh, when Christ came as a man, he never came as a man after the fall. With the weakness that man had after the fall. He came as the second or last Adam. He came at Adam before the fall. And he become, unless, unless, unless they this our big brother. I'm going to prove it. He became the, the, the big brother of the family of God. The firstborn. Um, Pastor Steve, you again, First Corinthians 15, 45 to 49. First Corinthians 15, from 45 to 49. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spirit is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Amen. Next, you can talk about that image. <coughs> Who we are as Christians. How many Christians have no idea what they are? They have no, no clue at all. So they walk on in the feet. I'm going to be practical here, practical, practical examples. John 20, 17. Jesus said, do not, do not hold on to me. For I'm not ascended to the Father. Go and said, go and said to my brothers. No, no, what you call the disciples? My brothers. And tell them, 
I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. It was 2.9-12. What we see Jesus, sorry, what we see Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crown of glory and honor. He by the grace of God might take the death for everyone. It was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in being many sons of glory. May the captain, not the word captain, also translates the author, pioneer, a perfect leader, founder, originator of their salvation, perfect to suffering. For both he was sanctified and those who are sanctified are all of one. For, for, for this reason, he's not a, a free shame to call them what? Brethren, know that? Call them brethren, brothers. No. Why is he that? Because he's the first. The firstborn is a chief, is a chief son of God. No, we're gonna talk about a little a little later. Um it says for both you sanctified and those who are sanct are, are, are all of one. Saying I will declare my name to my your name to my brethren. In the midst of that same I'll put in prayer to you. For those who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the, the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Understand, he became a man deliberately, to redeem man and bring him back to God. He became a man so he could die, a proper man. He became a man so he could show them how to overcome as a man. Colossians 1.15, the son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all his creation. Now, the first one means that he's the one that came first. There are certain things that rights accrue to him as a, as a firstborn. He's the first among us. Because of him, we can be born again. He's a man from heaven. We can be from heaven as well, being born again with the Spirit of God. Colossians 1 is the head of the body, the church, is the beginning and the, the first one from, from among the dead. Why? Because we're going to be born from the dead as well. Resurrection. So that in everything, it matters. It's supremacy. Hebrews 1 6. And God, and again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, All God's angels worship him. Hebrews 12 23. To the church of the firstborn, who's in married in, in, in heaven, he's called the firstborn. One who came first, Revelation 1, 1 5. And from Jesus, who is a faithful witness, the first one from the dead. At the end, you, you, you will return to his place as God. He just become man for time. But that's not, not his prominent role to redeem man back to himself. Colossians 1 15. To 24 to 28. I'm going to ask Pastor C to read this for you. First Corinthians 15, 24 right. to 28. First Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him, who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. You see, Jesus' role is to, to enforce the will of God on the part of Adonis. After doing that, he's gonna give it, give it back to give it back to God that God may be all in all. It's a temporary role. It's saver, he means save it only because we're in sin. Because of sin. Is that scripture? I'm gonna try to find it if I can. Give me a second. I want to share that scripture with you. Um I think it's Luke chapter one, I think. 
What does it what does it say? It says, therefore that all that thing in you shall all the thing as is a Matthew, that all the thing in you shall be called the Son of God. Ah, da, 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 da. ah look one. Uh, let, let, let me let me show my screen. Luke chapter one. What verses? Ah, uh, come on, I'm trying to find. All right, you can start. Right. You can start from verse twenty six to verse. Ma. Verse 30, 26 to 38. Now in the sixth month, is that where you start? Yeah. Twenty-six. Now in the sixth month, and angel, six month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? Do I stop there? Oh, keep going. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. You can't stop there. Okay. Look at that word, therefore. Therefore. Mm -hmm. Explain why the why why Jesus is gonna call the son of God, because he's gonna be born of her and born mm -hmm. of God. Right. It, the son of God was not before the birth through Mary. It was called the word of God before that. The logos called the word. It became flesh. John one, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Genesis that the, the, the seed of a woman shall destroy the, 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 the serpent. Not the seed of a man or woman. I mean, the woman alone will, will be responsible for producing the seed. Well, why am I saying this? Sometimes we think that Jesus, because he's the son of God, the son of man, that he mm -hmm. eternally the son. He became the son because he became flesh. Is mm -hmm. God. Let's not forget that. Please. Is God. In fact, I'm trying to show us how important the role is. He said, mm -hmm. if you blaspheme, you shall be forgiven except the Holy Ghost. You know why? The Holy Ghost is God himself coming to lead you to Christ. You speak a word against the Son of Man. Because he's a son of man, he's going to forgive him. But not against the Holy Ghost. Because that's God himself. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? I want us to get an understanding. It's important. I heard people pray and say, Father Jesus. So, so. You can't say that. You pray to the Father in Jesus' name. That's what he, that's what he teaches. I heard people teach and say, when we're not finished praying, I will pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's not scriptural either. The Bible does not say that. It says, pray to the Father in my name. I have to get into the habit of praying God's word. There are people that are here praying for people and, and saying, God, because it troubles me, understands it. 
I will teach on this like later on. Right now, I'm just saying the foundation. The foundation that says that God is working and God has been working and God wants to continue to work. And we're going to partner with God to get the work done. We're going to start to see God work. This weekend coming up, we are putting on a conference in, in Pakistan. Pakistan is 2% Christians. And Christians there are feeling, feeling because of for the gospel's sake. The Christians were being killed and thrown into prison. And we need to take this thing seriously. Take the issue of fighting Satan. I've seen men saved and are going to hell. The same persecutors want to see them saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I, I'm encouraging us. We talk about purpose first and needs. There are people that pray for their needs and forget about purpose. I want to get healed. Why? I want to because I want to feel better. No, that's wrong. I want to get healed so my strength can be there to share the gospel or to affect people around more. To live to see my son down and daughters come to the Lord and my neighbors being affected. There's a brother called Vivian Martin. We can share something with really once. I was so blessed by it. We're pre preparing for a conference. And he starts to go jogging every morning. So I said, Vivian, why are you doing that? You look, you look fit already. And said, David, I'm doing it because I want to go to the conference and dance, dance while getting tired. So, wow. Most people exercise because they want to look good. I'll be fit. You're doing it for the kingdom. Brother um, Raymond Prawl says he go to go to the gym and build, build his muscles. That's why he wants to be able to preach without getting tired. So he can preach in, in hot sun anywhere it need to be. And don't get tired and break down. That's different. Our purpose versus needs. Why do you work? Only you have a good life? Because we want to establish the kingdom. Are you concerned about the kingdom or about your needs? Amen. I'm going to stop there today. Amen. Any questions? I had a comment. Um, 